In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who is my helper, my standby, my teacher, my God. I yield myself totally unto him, spirit, soul, and body. I do not depend upon my own intellect, nor my own ability. I'm trusting in the Spirit of God to rise up and live big within me. Satan, we remind you that you're already bound in Jesus' name. You'll not hinder the word, nor any from receiving the word, but also hear, understand, and be blessed and benefited. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are my helper, that the people's eyes are anointed to see revelation, and their ears are anointed to hear and receive revelation. And we thank you for it. Your word shall not return vain, void, or nonproductive, but shall accomplish that which you please and prosper in the lives where until you send it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, first of all, let me say welcome all members, partners, and covenant friends, and happy Mother's Day to all you mothers that celebrate Mother's Day. We would love to, you know, be able to take y'all guys out this afternoon to some of the finest restaurants, but because of the present situation of the pandemic, uh, we still want you to have a wonderful, joyous day. So you that are home, you make sure that you make your mama feel special today, praise God, even though you may can't go and take out to a restaurant, y'all can do some mighty fancy things around the house today. But again, happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. And even if you're not a mother, then you have a mother, you're a child of a mother, and so we want to say happy Mother's Day to you also because you have a mother. And the Bible says that we are to honor our father and our mother that our days may be long upon the land. And so thank God you need to honor them. Praise God today in every way that you can. And not just this day, but every day. Praise God. So whether you have children or you are the child of a mother, we want to say happy Mother's Day to all of you. Have a wonderful message for you today. I believe it will be very uplifting and helpful. It's called the unfailing faith of a mother. The unfailing faith of a mother. Thank God for a mother's faith. Hallelujah. Sometimes we as children does not realize the faith that our mother uh, exercised for our life. Not just now, but even growing up from the time we were small in a crib to every stage of our life. Hallelujah. Through our adolescence, grade school, junior high school, high school, even through college, if you may. The unfailing faith of a mother. That's such a powerful, powerful thing, praise God. And uh, we want to celebrate you as you celebrate this day with the word of God. Let's look at 2 Timothy ch chapter 1 verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. The unfailing faith. Hallelujah. Faith that never fails. Mm -mm -mm. Of a mother. She just believes God regardless of the children. Regardless of that son or daughter. Uh, regardless of how they act, or whether they're obedient or disobedient, it's that faith of a mother that never fails to just keep believing the best. That's what the Bible says love does. It hopeth all things. It endureth all things. It never fails. It believes the best of every person, praise God. And I want you to look at a scripture here in 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to look at one verse of scripture we're going to look at it from both the King James and Amplified. Verse 5 says this, and this is Paul talking to his son Timothy in the faith. He said, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee. Now notice what, what was in Timothy, faith. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So if faith is in him, that must mean he had the word of God in him, because faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. He said, when I call to remember this unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first. It didn't start in you. First, it was in your grandmother, Lois. And then secondly, in your mother, Eunice. Notice there's three generations here. We got Lois, grandmother. We got Eunice, mother. And then we have Timothy, who is a son. And he said, I am persuaded that it is in thee also. What is in thee? He just told you. Unfeigned faith. Faith was in Timothy. Faith was in this young man. Praise God. And it just didn't get there by itself. It came from three generations. What Lois had. The grandmother she deposited into Eunice. And what Eunice had when she had children. She deposited into Timothy her son. 
And notice if faith was in them, that means they had to be deposited in the word of God. Amen. And as a mother, that's what every mother's dream, every mother's prayer is to see all of their children saved, born again, and going to heaven. Amen. I know that's the dream of every mother. That was my mother's dream. It was eight of us. We had a mother who, uh, my mom, Clara Diggs, who uh, read the word of God to us. We prayed, taught us to pray around the table, pray at night, praise God. And uh, she made sure that we stayed in church and got the word of God. Amen. And that's how faith got in me. She made sure that when the, uh, the summertime was going on and Billy Graham was preaching, she would you know, we'll be outside playing, you know, hide and go seek and all the other games. But she would say, no, you got to come in because Billy Graham is preaching. I remember how she would make us sit there and Billy Graham would be preaching in those large, large stadiums, praise God, preaching the word of God. And by listening to Billy Graham and in the simplicity of the gospel, I heard the gospel, the word of God. Faith began to get in me. Now, little did I know years later what my mama taught me and what I was hearing Billy Graham preach was something that saved my life when I was at Decision Road on drugs and alcohol and pills and, and, and I thought about suicide and I thought about I was miserable because I would got into drugs and alcohol and, and pills uh, in high school and thereafter and, and, and oh, I tell you, my life was miserable. But I could hear my mother's voice and I, I could hear Billy Graham's voice saying, give your heart to Jesus. Now the Bible calls it the word of God, that incorruptible seed years later. When I'm at Decision Road, because my mama had deposited the word in me, here it is coming alive. And we see Timothy, the same example here, praise God. That he said, this faith first, that I'm persuaded it, it was in thee, it was first in your grandmother Lois and then in your mother Eunice. So they was diligent about teaching and giving Timothy the word of God. And as mothers, we've got to uh, be diligent about teaching our children the word of God, give them the word of God, love them, and better yet, live in a life of the word of God before them. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. I think that's Proverbs 22, 6, and when he's old, he will not depart. Now, if you train, it means to teach by example. It don't mean do as I say, it means do as I do. They're going to pick up whatever they see you do. If you read the word of God, if you have prayer habits, if you have godly habits, then you praise God. You start being diligent. Now you say, well, I've done all of that and my, my son and my daughter still act up and they, they got in rebellion. Well, you did your part. That word would not retain, return void. Notice he said when they're old, they'll not depart. That seed is still alive. So you got to still use your faith for them. That's why we're calling this the unfailing faith. Of a mother, praise God. That even when your child actions, even when your son and your daughter actions don't line up with Christian uh, ethics, praise God. Your faith still says hallelujah, glory. I'll not give up. This is the type of faith that will follow them to the cross. This is the type of faith that is the same type of faith that goes all the way beside those two male factors that were crucified beside Jesus. Who all of their life had lived the life of crime and one was cursing. Here they are being crucified, cursing Jesus and said, if you be the son of God, uh, come down. And the other one, instead of cursing Jesus, he looked into his eyes and seen compassion. And he said, Father, when, I come, when you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. And Jesus said, this day, will you be with me in paradise? In other words, here he is about seconds before his life has ended he accepted Jesus Christ that's the unfailing faith of the mother it follows them right up to that last breath because it never gives up hope the Bible says love never fails it believes the best it hopes all things it endures all we're talking about the agape type of love and this is the type now remember if faith is in Timothy and it was in the mother first his grandmother Lois and then the mother uh, Eunice then love had to be there because faith worked by love and praise God so uh, thank God these are two powerful sources uh, of fruit of the spirit that we can use and and we see three generations affected many times everyone we hear a lot of teaching in the body of Christ today on generational curses how to break the curse of this the father the curse of that well 
I don't believe all that. I just believe when you accept Jesus Christ, the curse is already broken because Galatians 3.13 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. And I don't think it just means the curse of poverty. I mean any curse of any father and the sins of the father, praise God. But we need to also talk about generational blessings. Notice here's the same blessing that was on Eunice, Lois rather, got on the daughter, Eunice, and what was on Eunice went into her son. It was faith. We're talking about the faith of a faith. It was deposited in three generations. We see that with Abraham. The Bible says Abraham was called the father of faith. And what was in Abraham got on Isaac. And what was on Isaac got on Jacob. And what was on Jacob got on Joseph. Four generations. A generation blessing. The Bible, God told Abraham, I'll bless thee and thy seed after thee and thou shalt be a blessing. And the same wealth, the same glory, the same wisdom that we see on Abraham, we see it get on Jacob. We see it get on J Joseph and uh, we see it Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Joseph. So thank God there is a faith that can be transmitted and transferred and we're diligent in just doing our part. Don't worry about how to act. Don't worry about what it looked like. You do your part. The Bible says if you sow the word of God. You pray over them, praise God. That word will not return void. I know for my mother, many years, it looked like she was never going to get a return on my life. Because it seemed like the more she prayed, the worse I got. <laughs> the crazier I got. The craziest things I did. But thank God, hallelujah, I want you to know, praise God, that the God has a way of bringing the wildest of us in, the most hard cases in. He can bring us to the cross and do it his way. And here I am, born again, preaching the gospel to all the world now. Why? Because the unfailing faith of my mother. And even though she's in heaven, I praise God for her, hallelujah. Amen. That her faith never, never fell. I remember when she did go to heaven and and I would play hero for my sisters and brothers. And, you know, I'm the baby of the family. So, hey, everything going to be all right. We're going to go on. You know, I'm strong for everyone, being the pastor, being the man of God. And then grieve properly myself. And then <laughs> some two or three months later, I found myself totally depressed. Because I held all that hurt and pain in me. I felt spiritless and no energy. I mean, I, it's like I couldn't make it, God. And I went to the Lord about it. I didn't even want to preach. I, I felt depressed. And, 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 and God says, it's your mother's prayer. She said, your mama's up here now. All those prayers and intercessions that she did for your life, praise God, uh, that you better raise up some intercessions. Tell your members, tell the members of your church to begin to surround you with prayer because your mama's prayers have been withdrawn from the earth realm. Hallelujah. And so it was all of those uh, intercessory prayers and those principalities and powers and wicked spirits in heaven that was coming against my life that I didn't even feel while mama was praying. She kept them driven back by covering me. But when they was withdrawn, man, I felt all that. And so immediately the intercessors of our church began to cover me, praise God, because they realized as go their pastor, as go their the members, praise God. So I want to just say to you mothers, be encouraged today, praise God. You've done your part. You've given the word of God. Hallelujah. Now trust that word and rest in that word because there, are, there is something called generational blessings, praise God. And even though you may not see it on one generation, it will be transferred. That's why we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Matter of fact, let me give you the first uh, statement, which is, we see a godly legacy of faith then. You know, we talk about generational curses. Well, they're generational blessings. We see leg a legacy of faith. Notice he said, this faith that, um, that's in thee, hey, it didn't start with you, man. Your, your grandma was diligent in the word of God. And she taught it to your mama, Eunice. And Eunice, Eunice uh, uh, taught it to you. And so there is a, a godly legacy of faith that is passed to three generations. It went from Lois to Eunice, that was Lois' daughter, and then from Eunice to Timothy. And so they was diligent with the word of God. Now I want to look at you, look at Proverbs 26, uh, 22, 6, and then we're going to look at Ezekiel 19, 10. But I was reading this scripture, and this is a very powerful scripture, uh, Proverbs 22, 6, and then Ezekiel. Uh, of course, we said, train up a child in the way that he should go. 
And when he's old, he's not departing. Your part is due to training, praise God. Your part is, your part is giving the word of God. Your part is praying for them. The Bible says, hallelujah, that God will save us and our house. Amen. You got to believe the scripture. Speak the word of God over their life. God says, great should be the peace of your children. Isaiah 54, 13, they will do the will of God. Well, it didn't look like I was going to do the will of God, but my mama just kept training me. And that wasn't just mean beat me across the head with the word. It means living a life of love before me, praise God. Now, it was tough, love. You know, my mama didn't believe in all of this, this new age timeout stuff. Johnny, timeout, you know, and Johnny screaming at mama, I don't want this and I don't want to do that. And I'm going to put you in timeout. My mama was old school. She would knock you out. You wake up after you wake up out of the closet. That was your time. Your time was out. It was over. Praise. That was your time out. And somehow, now I'm not advocating violence, praise God. I'm just telling you that I'm preaching now. And so it must have did something, amen. And so I'm not telling you to do your child like that, but I'm trying to say mama had a way of training us that wasn't a uh, new school method, it was old school. But she lived the life. She read the Bible. She lived the life. She kept us in church. She kept us around the word of God. As I said, we listened to Billy Graham. And so she did our part. And then later on, praise God, I want you to know that seed, the seed, is called an incorruptible seed. Even though I was on drugs, even though I got in rebellion, even though I got into to, to violence and, and was stealing, and, 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 and even though my life was a life of alcohol, and, and, and I mean, it just, it was terrible, man. That seed was still alive because it's called the word of God, incorruptible seed. And God, if you will, honor, God will honor your faith if you'll just hold on to the seed of the word of God, even when it looked like nothing is happening, praise God. And so thank God before my mama did go to heaven, I got born again and she was able to enjoy this side of my life and watch the churches uh, be built, praise God. She wasn't able to see the new church, but she did see the fruition of my life. So her work was not in vain because I didn't depart. So you got to believe that. But this other scripture, Ezekiel chapter 19, I was looking at this. Wow, it's kind of powerful because it's almost like what was in Lois got in Eunice and what was in Eunice got in uh, Timothy. It says, thy mother is like a vine in thy blood. Now, the blood, you know, represents the bloodline. In other words, praise God, whatever uh, is in the vine is going to flow out into the branch or to the children. Planted by waters. The waters represent the word of God. Because the Bible says we are cleansed by the washing of the water of the word of God. So she was like, because she stayed in the word, it was just like a vine in a bloodline. And she was fruitful. Just like how Lois are fruitful and had a daughter named Eunice and Eunice had a son named Timothy. Fruitful and full of branches by reason of the many waters because they stayed in the word of God. It's like a vine, praise God. There's a transfer, the bloodline. The faith was in Lois, hallelujah. And because of that faith, it was like a vine. It, it, it was connected in that branch of her first child, which was, which was Eunice, amen. And what got in Eunice, she stayed in the word of God, the water of the word. And it flowed into, into Timothy. And ain't no telling who many, how many lives Timothy affected. It goes from one generation to another. But it thank God for the unfailing faith of mothers who just didn't give up, mothers who just didn't quit. And I want to encourage you on this Mother Day, praise God, because I know it's, it's so many things that, that have brought you pleasure over the years. Maybe it's your nice home, maybe it's the clothes, but I know the most important thing is your children because that's what God put in the heart of mothers, praise God, the ability to uh, reproduce. And when they do that, it's always a special, praise God, and, and once you have a child, your life is never, ever, ever getting the same. Now, we had old school mothers. They was, you know, some of those uh, had midwives and stuff. And, you know, there was some of the older school mothers, you know, had 8, 10, 12 children. You know, today, <laughs> that stuff is unheard of. Hallelujah. So I just want to say to you, that might be one of the eight or one of the seven. Now, if nothing else, you should appreciate what your mother have gone through. And the price she paid and the time she sold into your life for you to have the quality of life that you have. And what a wonderful day to celebrate her goodness. Not just today, but every day of your life. So there is something that I wanted to show you called generational blessings and not just curses that can affect three different generations like the faith that was in 
Timothy, it got there from his mother, from his mother, and she got it from her mother, who was Lois. Look at Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 and 20. Again, we just want to say happy Mother's Day. We celebrate you. Thank God for the women uh, of God, amen, who have been mothers, some independently, some by choice, some because of divorce. That there are many mothers I know out there who had the absentee father. You, you, you had to do it on your own. You had to pay mom and dad. You had to pray protector and provider. And God, don't think that went unnoticed by God because you did whatever it took to cover your children, e even if their father was absentee. Praise God. And so God, don't think he does not honor that. And, and, and God will give you the grace to do whatever is necessary, praise God. Hallelujah. That's what grace is, an ability beyond your own ability. I know sometimes we feel pushed to the limit, but I want to say to you, God's grace is sufficient. And so you do your part, and God will definitely always do his part. He's going to keep his word. Deuteronomy 30, from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 30. And look at verse 19 and 20. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. God says, I'm going to give you inside tip. Therefore, choose life. Watch this. That both thou and thy seed after thee may live. That thou and thy seed may live. Notice your decision as a mother not only just affects you. But it affects your children also. Whatever you choose, he said, it's going to, it, your children are going to inherit it. He said, if you choose life, both you and your seed after they may live. Now, remember Abraham, the Bible says, I know Abram. The reason God made the cover of Abram, he said, because Abraham would teach his children's children. And so God is not just interested in you getting the word of God. You understand in the Bible, he's interested in you passing on that legacy of faith, that godly heritage to you and your seed after thee. He noticed that, notice he said here that thou may live and thy seed after thee. Thy seed that they may live. Verse 20, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. And the length of thy days. My God, my God. He said, man, he is the, the, thy life and the length of thy days. That thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. And here it is, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. We see generational blessings. Now, that's on the man's side. But here, he's saying whatever we choose, that choice just does not affect you alone. He said that, that choose light that both thou and thy seed. Verse 19. Thou may live, praise God. And so uh, it's important, praise God, that the decision that we make, the choices that we make. And it don't matter what I choose to do. Yes, it does. You need to get your, your, your children and raise them up on the word of God. You need to get them in church. Now, don't try to wait till they're 15, 18, 22. They're going to fight you then. That's why you got to get them when they're, when they're young. They ain't going to fight you in the bassinet. They're not going to fight you when you want or two. That's why we got to start early, praise God. God says that we are to, to, to remember the creator in the days of our youth. That's why mama, she, man, my God, we didn't have no choice about, you know, this new day, do you feel like going to church? What you mean, do I feel like? Do you want to go to mama would kick yourself out of the bed, you rust and say, boy, if you don't get up and then put your clothes on. Man, we had to earn our clothes, do everything. Saturday night, be ready for church. Why? Well, she was just doing our part. Amen. She wasn't asking us. Hallelujah. You got to take authority. You got what well, God was holding her responsible. So she made decisions to keep us in church. Read the word of God. Not just go and let some other preacher do the preach. Mama would read the Bible at home. Amen. We, she would be praying for us at home. And so we could see that faith. We could see that she was a Christian woman. Amen. And, and as we got older, those things never left us. Praise God. Amen. We knew what was right. We knew what was wrong. We knew the word of God because mama chose life. She chose Jesus and it began to affect you, uh, my brothers and I, praise God. So 
Uh, your decision, I want you to put up this statement here. Your, your decision then as a mother affects not only you, but your children also. Your decision as a mother. And this, of course, is true about a father. It's true about anyone, but it's mama's day. We ain't talking about y'all daddy. We're talking about mama. Amen. So when you decided to get in the word of God, when you decided to get saved, when you decided to do what's right, when you decided to pray and, 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 and raise your children up in the ab issue and the nurture of the Lord, it, it, thank God it had an influence on their life. May it not look like it, but that's why we walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. I knew my mama was a Christian. I could see it in her life, but I didn't want her to know that I knew. That's how it is. You got to play tough, praise God. But the Holy Spirit has a way of changing us and drawing us in. So your decision then as a mother affects not only you. It ain't just about you getting saved. But notice, and I can even dare say not only your seed, but your seed, seed, your children's children. Because, amen, that's what's wrong with this generation now. We finally re re uh, are raising a generation that has been displaced from God. Babies raising babies who know nothing about God because mama didn't do her job. And so that child, that daughter, that son came up knowing about God. And then, of course, you can impart to someone else the next generation what you don't know. So there's been a disconnect. And that's why we see such immorality, such violence, and such a takeover, the influence of Satan. But thank God we're going to still do our part because the word of God still works. Hallelujah. God says he will bless us and our seed. Our seed will be mighty upon the earth. So your decision as a mother affects not only you, but your children's also. Now look at Psalms 55, 5. And I want you to look at it from 51, 5 from the Amplified Bible. Look at this. You say, well, watch this. Behold, David said, I was brought forth in the state of iniquity. My mother was sinful, okay, who conceived me, and I too am sinful. I want you to get this first. He said, what was in mama <laughs> got in me. He said, I was born and shaped in iniquity. My mother was sinful, who conceived me, and I too am sinful. Now, we know there's a missing party left out of this, and that's the daddy. Because you can't, David just didn't get in here uh, by himself. But what he's talking about is the sin nature. And he's using the effect of mama, what got in mama, that's why I want to use this as a parallel, got in me. And so that's why... Not only the man, but the man and the woman. This is what Jesus was taking, teaching Nicodemus in the third chapter of St. John. He said, you must be born again. Why? Because if you don't make a decision, a decision for Christ, automatically your children are going to be born and shaped in iniquity. Of course, there's an age of accountability. But they're going to do what they see you do. They're going to desire what you see, they, see you desire. And, and, and if you desire the things of God and you teach them the things of God and you show them, teach them that God is good and how to tithe and how to love God, how it affects their life. This has been proven. That's why you see kids that are, uh, uh, you know, have criminal records and drugs and alcohol and already uh, at an early age, they already have have a uh, what is called, a, a you know, a, 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 what's, I'm trying to think of the highest state of the. <laughs> uh, for some reason this word is escaping me convicted I know they're convict but when you have a criminal record and it goes on your path and you take these kids and you break it down and you retrace and you find out there's not only not a father there but you also find out that there are there are, are, are the, the mother she didn't do her part and so here he says behold I was born forth in a sinful state and so, based off of that, Jesus was teaching in the third chapter of St. John's Gospel. He came, Nicodemus came to him by night and he said, you know, uh, you know, what must I do? And, you know, you know the story. And Jesus told him, you must be born again. And he said, what you mean born again? How can I go the second time into my mother's womb? I'm too big. And come." Jesus said, no, no, no. That that is flesh is flesh, but that that is spirit is spirit. That's why every man, every woman, every child 
hallelujah, they, 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 they're born into sin and except that mother makes a decision, praise God, then automatically, not by choice, that that same God of that mother is going to be the same God of that child. And so your decision not only affects just you, it affects everyone around you. I know when mama chose Jesus and kept us in church and kept us in revival and, and hearing the word of God and she would play it on the radio. My God, man, we, we, we knew something was different. We knew we had another, if nothing else, we knew that if we ever got in trouble, there was a God because we'd seen our mama talk to God. We'd seen our mama pray to God. So, uh, hallelujah, choose life that both thou mayst live and thy seed after thee. And then their seed, then they can teach their children's children. And I thank God for my son, uh, Christopher, that, you know, praise God that, you know, he's a good kid. But, you know, we didn't force him to do anything. We just lived a lie. We just taught him the word of God. He's just like any other child. He made mistakes. Amen. He's not perfect. Sometimes people think preachers' kids are not, you know, put all this pressure on them. They got to be perfect. I didn't do that. I, 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 I went to his football games. I went to his basketball game. Well, basketball, he didn't play football. I went to everything he wanted to do. I got involved and supported him, praise God. And it was because of my love that me and his mama showed him when he was born. Praise God. Or before he was born, we would take messages. And back then it was cassette tapes. And put the, 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 the earphones, you know, the old earphones that kind of went all the way around your head. We put them on her stomach and, and train them with the word of God because his spirit was aware. We were planting the seed way back then, praise God. And, and George's faith would not fail. It didn't matter what happened, how it looked like. And I ain't just talking about sin. I'm talking about even sickness and disease. He was born with some blood disorder. And they was talking about that he was going to need a blood transfusion. And we said no in the name of Jesus. And so I remember me and George grabbed hair and rebuked that and, and bleed for the cleansing of his blood. And, and his blood was made pure and he never had to have this transfusion. What am I trying to say? Our decision is affecting the quality of his life. And so praise God. Hey, I want to encourage every mama out there, praise God, that it's never too late. I don't care how old they are. I don't care what their age is. You keep your faith on the line. The unfailing faith of a mother, praise God. You choose life. He said it's going to affect you and thy seed after thee. Now that's God's responsibility. He said if you believe God, I'll deal with them. I'll deal with the hearts of the kid. I don't care if they're prodigal. Did you notice that story of the prodigal son? That even when he left and he got out there, he was hard-headed. And, and he, 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 the Bible talks about he spent all his money on, uh, his money on righteous living and drugs and alcohol. And, and he found himself slopping hog. That's what sin to do. Well, guess what? The Bible says he came to himself. It was God, that faith of that mother. We talked about the father, but that's a parable about God. But he had a mother too. God, it's God's responsibility to deal with them, and he will. Praise God. If you don't let your faith fail. That's why Jesus was praying for Peter. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan is out of shit you like we, but I have prayed for your faith that it fail not. Why? Don't let your faith fail. He said, because if your faith don't fail, when thou art converted, not if, there's coming a change. Hallelujah. Faith can change that child. Faith can change that son and daughter. Faith can get to them. God is God's responsibility to deal with their heart and cause. He kept his faith. The father never left the porch when he came to himself. He said, my God, in my father's house, that seed was still there. So what am I trying to say? Your part is to keep the faith. It's God's part is to deal with them. Don't let your faith fail now and you will see. You will see, praise God, a conversion or a change. Amen, praise God. So that's why we must be born again. So it's, in, it's important what you look at, what you read, how you act, what you're talking, what's coming out of your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah, because your decisions not only affect you, but it affects your children also. Look at Psalms 127. Again, we want to dedicate this day to you. That's why I'm taking my time. I don't want to holler at you, preacher. I just want to encourage you 
Because thank God for the mothers of these land that have endured and, 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 and have, have, have did whatever was necessary to keep us in school and work two and three jobs to, to buy clothes and to help with books and get us through school and college, all the unseen things. And, and even when we were sick, was there to, to, I know my mama would rub us down with Vicks vapor rub. We call it mustard rub. That's all we had back then. All these called medicines, fire medic five and so and so this and third and this for cough and this for decon. We didn't have all that. Mama just rub you down. And thank God by the time I was born, they, she got rid of the castor oil. I heard about that. I ain't taking none of it in the name of Jesus. But that's about all they had. That big spoon of castor oil for those that were before me. And what am I saying? She took care of me all those days. She did what was necessary. She made, school that, made sure that we had lunch money for school. She made sure that we had a lunch for school. I don't know how mama do it. Eight of us. She did stuff to me. She was like a miracle worker, praise God. How all eight of us kids, four in one bed, amen, the boys' bed, and four girls in another. And all of us going to school, and we got all these agents. We never went without a meal. We always had clothes. We always had shoes. It's like mama was a miracle worker, praise God. Well, you don't forget about all that. Now that you got your car and you got your house, you got your life, praise God. Honor your mother today, praise God. That your days may be long upon this land. Tell her you love her, praise God. Give her her flowers right now while she can hear them and enjoy them. Praise God. Amen. Look at Psalms 127. Psalms 127. And we're going to look at verse 2 and 3. Now, this is talking about the faith of a mother. Of course, it's talking about father too, but it's Mother's Day. He said in verse 2, Psalms 127, It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for <laughs> so he giveth his beloved sleep. And notice who he's talking about. Verse 3, children. For lo, children are heritage of the Lord. Hey, it's vain for you. What are you worried about? Losers, they, oh, that boy's out. Lord, have mercy. That's sorry, and I hope he didn't wreck the car. Oh, Lord, I hope he, he didn't go to jail because he was doing drugs. Lord, I hope she's not somewhere shagging up with some. Lord, I hope. Worried about it. He said, that's vanity. You're wasting your time. Rise up early. Making yourself sick. Losing sleep. And then stand up late at night, he says, praise God here, to eat the bread of sorrow because he has given you sleep. Lo, children are heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. I want you to get that. That child just didn't get here just by accident. The Bible says they are called the heritage of the God and God will deal with them because he's the fruit of the womb, praise God. And so you need to learn how to commit that child child of God, how to release that child instead of up all night wondering what they're doing. Lord, I hope they don't get caught by the police. Lord, I hope they're not smoking that marijuana. Lord, I hope they're not in that party. Lord, I hope they don't get shot. Lord, uh, that early at night, eating the bread of salt, he said that's bad. He said he, you need to learn how to rest. Give them to God and rest, praise God, because he that keepeth Israel neither slumber nor sleep. So God don't need you tossing and turning, getting sick, losing sleep, getting all type of stress and anxiety in your body, breaking down your body's ability to resist sickness and disease, breaking down your mind where it is so trouble and no peace and all this. All of that, he said, that's vanity. God says, I knew not only you, I knew them before they was formed in your womb. And they're my inheritance. And I know how to take care of them. And I know how to deal with them. Look at Moses, mom and father. But in particular the mother. Because women are emotional. They have an emotional uh, relationship with their children. That's why the enemy messes with their mind. And here's... Here's Moses being born a proper child. And the Bible says his mom saw that he was a proper child and didn't fear the king's commandments because the king had commanded every child to another be killed because he, he knew a deliverer was coming because Moses was a type and shadow of Jesus. And the Bible says they hid Moses not fearing the king and they did it by faith. And the Bible says they pitched a little, a little, a, a little boat 
or you can call it a, just a little, a, a, a little basket, and they pierced it with tar, and they took Moses, and I can't even imagine that, a, a newborn, and released him in the Nile River with crocodiles, alligators, water moccasins, all types of anything, all type, anything, anything could have happened. And the Bible says they did it by faith. Hallelujah. What's happening? You think they was worried or that? No, they, they put them in the hands of God. And God supernaturally, like he'll do if you trust him, protected that little basket and brought it down the aisle and kept it from turning over and kept it from the wild currents and kept it from the crocodiles and kept it from all the alligators and kept it from all the water moccasins and kept it from all the amphibians, anything that could have destroyed it. And here is, here is, here is Pharaoh's daughter cleaning down at the Nile River and then the, the, the deliverer that, that Pharaoh is fearing, here's his daughter picking him up. Here's Moses being raised supernaturally. In the household of Pharaoh. And he not even know it. God took care of him. Well you reckon that the mama. Have you ever thought about that? What type of thought she had? Whatever happened to a child? Is he alive? The enemy tried to torment him. But they did it by faith. We're talking about the faith. The unfailing faith of a mother. Glory be to God. And I'm talking to someone right now. That you ain't been sleeping well. You've been waiting on the phone call for that son and daughter to call. They didn't call you. Release them into the mighty hands of God. Humble yourself and cast the care of them over. Put them in God's hand and watch God deal with them. Watch God. You just keep your faith on the line. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And here he says it's vain to do that because God wants you to sleep. Mama, God wants you to have rest. Not just tonight, but every night of your life. Not just over your children, rest concerning your bills, rest in this pandemic. Rest, everything is going to be all right, praise God. He's able to do exceedingly abundant above all you can ask to think. He can take care of you and your children. He can provide for you and your children and your grandchildren, by the way, praise God. Cast the care of them over on God. So many mothers today are trying to have lived their life and they're struggling and, 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 and trying to raise the grandkids because the children are irresponsible. And I'm not saying you shouldn't visit them. I'm not saying you shouldn't help them out, but they got to take responsibility. I believe that Lois and I believe that Eunice taught Timothy to be responsible. Faith does not hide from problems that deal with problems. Hallelujah. And if you always run into your kids aid and the grandkids aid and doing this and belling them out, it's like you're giving them a crutch in life. At some point, they're going to have to grow up and live with the decisions they make and God will get them out. I made some crazy decisions too, but I turned out all right. I mean, I almost went to jail. I almost a lot of stuff. I almost a lot of crazy stuff. But my mama faith, faith got me out of that. Mama said, I'm not going to be no crutch for you, boy. Hallelujah. It's, it was called tough love. She says, you're going to respect me in my house and the rules here and being at this time. And when you can get your own, I remember, I can hear it now, when you can pay your own bills, get your own house, get your own bed, own clothes and feed your own mouth, you can do what you want to do. Until then, you're going to listen to me, boy. Praise God. And uh, it came to pass. It was just like a prophecy. Because mama didn't joke. Amen. Praise God. But she loved us. Amen. And I turned out all right. So this is what I want to say from this scripture. Listen to this statement. Then give your children, since it's vain to do all that worrying and up late at night, early in the morning. Give your children to God, then enter into rest. Wow. Man. <laughs> mama would do, I remember. I'd be going out the park and get high and do all that crazy stuff. Mama just go in her room. She just said, I love you, boy. You know, she'll point that finger and say, praise God. Don't pray for me. Love me. I said, don't pray for yourself. But it bothered me because she said, look, I done got, I'm giving you to God. You ain't going to drive me crazy. I ain't going to lose my peace. God has given me sleep. That's what Psalm 127 says. So he says here, give your children to God, then enter into God's rest. What you mean? God, when you're giving to God, God don't go, oh my God, they don't draw, they don't hang out. What am I going to do? Oh, they smoking that mouth. No, God rests because he's declared the end from the beginning. So you need to rest by trusting God. I humble myself. Amen. First Peter 5, 6, and 7. Under the mighty hand of God. I took him out of my hand. And boy, I didn't put you in the hands of God. Hallelujah. And as the song goes, 
this, this, and this, this, and that, that. Leave it there. Quit singing the song if you're going to keep picking it up. And we don't pick it up with our hands. We pick it up with our mind, with our emotions. Oh, I want the Lord. I hope it now. Cast that thought down there in the hands of God. You rest. Rest your mind. Rest your spirit. Rest your soul. Look at Hebrews 4, 2, 3. And we'll find out what rest I'm talking about. For unto us was the gospel preached, the word of God, like I'm preaching to you right now, as well as unto them. But watch this. How can you preach the word? Some get it. Some don't. And we all in the same building hearing the same thing. I'll show you how. But the, the gospel was preached as well unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Just like you hear me say, oh, but pastor, you don't know my son. You don't know my, I don't have to know. God know. Mixed faith. Hallelujah. If you can change it, you would have get it by now. So you, your hands can't do it. So put them in the mighty hands of God. Then mix faith. How do you mix faith? You put it in your mouth and say what God said. For we would believe. Believe what? What God said. That I give you beloved sleep. That the children are the heritage of the Lord. That believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved in the house. You rest by believing what God said about your children. We which believe do enter into rest as he has said. As I sworn in my wrath that the day shall not end into my rest. Although they were the works was finished. I like this from the foundation of the world. Boy I already worked you and your son problem out from the foundation of the world. That's why after seven days, I wouldn't have rested if I hadn't looked into the future, saw you, your son, your daughter, and all the problems they would call you, and had not created a solution. If I, I wouldn't have rested, but I looked into the ears of time because I'm God, declined the end from the beginning. You live in time, but I live in eternity, and I know how it's going to turn out even with them. So I'm resting because it's going to be like the word says. So I'm inviting you to enter into my rest over your kid, not just your kids, your finances, your home, this pandemic. Enter into rest. No evil shall befall you. I don't care how many have died. I don't care if 100,000 people die. And 10,000, it will not come now where I dwell unredeemed. Rest. 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 How do you rest? By believing what God said about the situation. Believing the promise instead of the problem. Are you listening to me? What you're saying is God not big enough to handle the situation. Your son or your daughter in finance. So what he's saying is, hey, if you really believe, it might be all hell going on. It don't matter what, what I was doing. Mama started rest. I was wondering why she's so peaceful. Man, she'd be in there snowing. She like, she would sleep good. While I'm out get my head beat up, about to get shot, get all that. Mama said, I hey, you in the mighty hands of God. And I turned out all right. She was believing the scripture concerning because as far as God said, the work was finished from the foundation of the world. So that's a very important statement. Amen. Give your children to God and everything else that I might add, the bill, the problem, whatever it is, the doctor's diagnosis, give it to God and believe what God said and mix faith with it and we will believe to end into rest. In other words, you got to fight the fight of faith for your household. Look at this statement. You inherited Children from God. Remember he said children are heritage of the Lord. God takes it personal. And the Bible says since children, you inherited your children from God. Now he wants you to commit them back to God. Wow. Wow. We call it dedication. That don't mean you got to come up and have me do it. In Anyone can do that. It was a her God you gave me this child. And I take responsibility. And you said children are heritage of the Lord. And it's vain for me to rise up early and, and worry about and stay up late at night eating the bread of sorrow. He says, for you inherit the children and now commit them back to God. Look at 2 Timothy 1.12. What you mean commit them back to God? Well, God, you gave them to me. I'm going to give them back to you. And look what he says here. And this it's why I'm suffering as I do. Still, I am not ashamed for I know, I perceive and have knowledge of and I'm going to claim it with him that, that, that 
whom I have believed. Remember, we which believe do in and the rest. And have trusted in and relied on. I am positively persuaded that he is able to guard. Now watch this. And keep that which he has been entrusted to me. Who is that? That child, that son, that baby. Whatever God gave you, he entrusted you. But remember the inheritance of the Lord. He gave you sleep. And which I have committed to him until that day. What day? To the day Jesus Christ comes. Notice what you give to me, I'm committed back to you. And God is able, whatever you put in the hands of God is secure. Hallelujah. I mean, committed. The devil say, yeah, but what not? I committed them to God. See, that's how you fight the fight of faith. The unfailing faith of the mother. You go to bed at night. Siren star. Oh, that's your boy. He been shot. Nope, not mine in the name of Jesus. And even if it is, I committed them to God. God will take care of them. I mean, that's how you do. You fight the fight of faith. I'm not going to let you rob me of my peace for you've given me sleep. And I'm not going to spend the rest of my life in vanity. Stand up late and rising up or early eating the bread of sorrow i never put this up in amplify put that up in amplify that same scripture uh psalms 127 because it's very important if we have it i think we're supposed to have it psalms let's see yeah yeah psalms 127 verse 2 and 3 look what it says here he said it is vain for you to rise up early and to take rest late sitting there Mama, I never came in two, three in the morning. Mama was sitting there on the couch like that. Mama was snowing. He said, boy, I done put you in the hands of God. I'm trusting God. He said, that's vanity. To eat the bread of anxiety, to be anxious, anxiety, and tall. For he give blessing. He give his beloved sleep. Watch this. Behold, children are heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb a reward. God says, you, you just do your part. Give them to me, praise God. I've inherited them. I'm going to treat them like my own. I'll take care of them. In other words, watch this. If you're going to work and you're going to be up early in the morning, rubbing your hand, walking the floor and late at night, eating hands, I wonder what they're doing. God says, if you're going to work, then I can't do nothing. I'm on rest. You tied my hands because you think you can do it. But if you will rest, if you'll go to sleep, and say, Lord, I thank you. You give your beloved sweet sleep. I ain't worried about kids, son, daughter, bill, car payment. I, I, you thank you I have sweet. I say that and I have to confess it out of my mouth when my brain is trying to pick up this. And what you going to do about that in the morning? Ends I, nope. He giving me beloved sleep. Then while you rest, then God is working. That's how you enter into his rest. You can sleep knowing just like the man we talked about in, in Mark the fourth chapter who sowed a seed, rise night and day. The Bible say he sleep. He don't toss and turn. He ain't up in the middle of the night walking the floor. The seed grow up, he don't know how. He's talking about the word of God. So you got to make up your mind. Either you don't trust God or you're not. Mama, God wants you to have rest. This is your day all day long. Celebrate your life. Kids, celebrate mama. Make us some of the best meal there is. If you have to go out, get it, praise God. Then go out and get it. Y'all celebrate, praise God. So that, But not just rest this day, but every day. But mama, you're going to have to learn to cast down thoughts and imagination and, and let your mind rest. Amen. Let your emotions rest. For we that believe God do enter into rest. So you inherit them, so give them back to God. Now, I want to give you, oh, this is one of my favorite scriptures, Jeremiah 31. Verse 15 through 17. Because I want you to have a beautiful day today. I wouldn't. I know my mom is proud of me teaching this as she listens from heaven while I teach you. Praise God. Amen. She finally entered into rest concerning me. She recognized that, you know, God could take care of me in the minute. Mama used to think she had to protect me from all the haters in the ministry and all the enemies, you know, in the ministry. If someone was trying to do something to the church. She was trying to, she, she was treating me like a son and not a pastor. Someone was, thought, she thought somebody was doing something. And mama would pray and God would show us some things. But she wanted to take the enemies out herself. She didn't know how to stand still to let the Lord fight the battle. Mama would say, now God, I got this and you stand still. Roll up, fist up. I remember one preacher was sitting right on the front row. 
And mama was just praising God. She used to praise God like a seal. I thought she was a seal. She'd be, hallelujah, hallelujah. And right in the middle of the she'd just stop and say, you devil, you, you devil. Talking to a preacher, you devil, you ain't going to get the church. You'll die for you get this church. I know you. And I said, mama, you can't do that. I almost had to call the police on her. Why? She thought she had to protect me. My mama finally learned that she could rest. And God had a way of dealing with devils. I told mama, God said, let the wheat go grow with the tares, and he'll separate it. Now, mama wanted to separate them. I said, mama, you can't do that. And she finally realized God was able to protect me and the ministry. And we turned out all right. And that was rest. Rest. Don't let your emotions get connected to your children to the point that they disturb your rest. God gives his beloved sleep. Now, look at Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. And I, I want all y'all mamas to, 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 to write this one down. I mean, you should write them all down. Get, get the CD or whatever. Or go on, uh, uh, praise God, whatever it is you go. Uh, not the website, what, what they call that? YouTube. And, and pull this one back up. You're going to need this one. But look at verse, look at a verse 15 through 17. And this is, this is Jeremiah. 31. For thus saith the Lord, thy voice was heard in Ramah. Lamentations, that means weeping. Bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children and refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. But thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping. Stop your crying, mama, praise God. Dry your tears. Thus saith the Lord, for and thine tears from thy eyes for the work, your work, your faith shall be rewarded. Remember, train up a child in the way that he's going. He's not a, when he's old, he'll not depart. It's God's reason. He said, I've heard your prayer. I'm doing my part. You quit crying, praise God. Get your joy back. Get your rest back. He said, for thy work shall be rewarded, said the Lord. And they, talking about the children, shall come again from the land of the enemy, wherever you think, oh Lord, they out there doing this and doing that. And the devil tried to make you think they so twisted, tangled up, ain't no hope. He said, no, they gonna come again. And there is hope in the end. You look at them as they are now. It's not the end. We're gonna have a good final outcome, a good expected end. Saith the Lord, and thy children shall come Again to their own border. Glory be to God. So dry your tears. Start rejoicing. Get your joy back. Get your dance back. Mama, rest good tonight. Hallelujah for his vain night and day to toss and turn over them. God says they're coming back home. Hallelujah. Look at this from the Amplified. It even get more powerful. For thus, for thus, the thus saith the Lord. A voice was heard in Rama. Lamentations, bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted. But y'all don't know. She's on drugs. And he's doing that. And he's shacking up with so-and-so. And they twist it up in this car. God, listen. Is there anything to offer God? Thank you. No. Praise God. And she refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. But thus saith the Lord. Not pastor this. God is speaking. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears for your work. You can say your faith. We're talking about the unfailing faith. All the work, everything you prayed for, everything you've done, all the teaching, all the training, everything since they was in the crib, praise God. Since they was in the bassinet, all the changing of the diapers, all the feeding their faces, all the getting them registered in school. All It seemed like it's all forgotten, all the little things that they don't even know about. He said, your work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and your children shall return from the enemy's land. That's talking about saying those names, praise God. And look at verse 17. And there is hope in your future. God says things look bright, says the Lord, for your children shall come back to their own country or back to their own kingdom. In other words, from the, out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. But what, what can God do when you crying and weeping and up all night eating the bread of salt? He said, that ain't going to do nothing except make you sick and cause you to lose sleep. He says, amen, the work shall be 
rewarded. So I'm going to make this statement as we get closer to closing here. Stop crying then. Your faith will be rewarded. And your children will come back to God. Stop crying. Dry your weeping eye. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell Martha not the more. Tell Martha not the more. No, I'm just messing with you, but no. That's a part of it. Don't weep and don't cry. For what? Look what God says. Stop crying. Your faith will be rewarded. Did he believe God or not? If God know how to listen, if God can get the Pharaoh, if God can get the Mo, if God, have you thought, if God can get to you, you were a mess. You thought you were hoping. Your mama thought the same thing about you that you think about your child. Like, oh my God! But look at you. You turned out all right. Stop crying. Your children will come back to God. And I love Isaiah sixty verse four. Look at this. Lift up thine eyes round about. Mm. And see all that they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far. Hallelujah. Out of drug houses, out of rough stuff. Your daughter's going to come out of all types of mess and shall be nursed at your side. Before it's over, they're going to be right in church hearing me pray. Right there beside you, praise God. It's going to be father, mom, Dad, son, daughter. He said they're coming and they're going to be nursed at your side. That's a prophetic word. You need to take these scriptures and confess them every day over your children. Every, I don't care how they look. I don't care where they act. I don't care where they're at. I don't care if they're at home with you or in their faraway country. I don't care if they're in the United States where they're at. He said they're coming home. Hallelujah. You need to learn the rest, mom. Because God loves you. And let your mind and your emotions rest. And tell the devil he's a liar. Tell him to take your hands. I bind you concerning my son and my daughter. Whatsoever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. And I break the power of darkness over their mind. The Bible says if our gospel be hid, the only reason it's hid because the God of this world blinds the mind unless the light of the gospel will shine. So I bind them in the name of Jesus. And I pray right now in the name of the anointing. Every son, every daughter, every child. Hallelujah. That's been wavered. In the name of Jesus, I release my faith under the anointing that's on me right now. And you mamas at home, release your faith. Get that child, praise God. I bind Satan concerning every son and every daughter of every person listening to me. In the, every child, Satan, I break your power. Loose them and let them go in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that the angels of God, hallelujah, go forth and laborers are crossing their children's path. They're bringing them the word of the God. And people are witnessing to them and putting tracks in their head, hallelujah. And every place they turn, the light of the gospel is shining. And I thank you that that darkness has been removed from their eyes and that the truth is revealed and we claim them coming back to our own borders they're coming back home spirit of God draw them no man can come you said that the, the spirit of God draws him thank you Holy Ghost for drawing them out of dark places and bringing them back to the light and we claim household salvation in Jesus name now every mom that bleed that start rejoicing start praising God with me right now in the name of Jesus that's the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. All you do to do. Remember, the gospel was preached, but the word preached didn't profit those. Why? If you don't mix faith with what you're hearing, put it in your mouth and speak it, praise God, over your children. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, this last one is good too. Job chapter 22, verse 28 and 30. Again, happy Mother's Day. Look forward to seeing y'all guys soon. We know this is the month of May and hopefully the restrictions are going to be loose somewhat. We're going to all come back together. But you keep, praise God, get the live stream. You take advantage of Sunday morning broadcast on CW20. You know the channels, verse 20, 3 from 9 to 10. Praise God. Get that double hour of power and keep getting these live streams. And then Tuesday night. At 7.30, you tune in. We're going to keep bringing you. But hopefully things will be changing soon. We'll be keeping you updated through our automated call. Praise God. Look at Job as we get ready to close. Chapter 22. Job chapter 22. And look at verse 30. Because you're going to have to begin to make a the declaration of faith over your house and over your children. Nothing happens except you speak it first. 
Bible says in, in, in 2 Corinthians 4.13, we have in the same spirit of faith. I believe, therefore have I spoken. If you believe what God says about your children and find that, then you're going to have to declare it. For with the heart, man believe, but with the mouth, confession is made unto Romans, the 8th chapter, praise God. I mean, the 10th chapter, uh, verse 9 and 10. Look what Job said in Job chapter 22, verse 28. Thou shalt decree a thing. And it shall be established unto thee, and thy light shall shine upon thy way. You're going to have to begin to make some decree. Let that devil know. Take your hands off my son and daughter. I'm decreeing in the name of Jesus, the word of God. My children are coming again to their own border. The work of my hand, praise God, is rewarded. I want to thank you. I've trained them up and they'll not depart. Father, I want to thank you. Great ship. Amen. You got to decree it. And then verse 30 says this. And he shall deliver the islands of innocent and it and it is delivered by the pureness of thine hand. Now look at this and amplify it as we get ready to close. Praise God. It says here, he says, you shall decide. See, make a decision. I'm tired. Devil, I made a decision. I'm not worried anymore. See, nothing changed to you first. Make a decision. I'm giving that boy, I'm giving that girl, I'm giving that bill, whatever it is that stretch you, I'm making the decision in the name of Jesus that God is bigger than the problem. And if God bigger than the problem, he can handle it. And I put it in the mighty hands of God. He's able to keep that that I committed it to him. And I put it, I committed that to God, hallelujah, that he committed me. It's your problem. I, I hate to put it this way, but it, it's your problem. That's your problem. That's just your sin. That's what I tell God about bills. That's, those are your bills. When we were believing God for the finance, I said, God, this is not, I committed the church to you. Those are your bills. Father, thou hast bills, and he paid everyone. You shall decide and then decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your way. God will show you how to talk to them. God will show you what to say. God will show you the type of letters they'll respond to. God will begin to bring you light. But until you decree, hallelujah, praise God, that all of my house, my, me and my house are saved. Until you begin to decree that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. He said, then favor. God will begin to shine the light. And now look at, look at verse 30. Very interesting scripture. Because this is where your intercession, your decree comes in. And he will even deliver the ones for whom you intercede. Son, daughter, child. Even stuff that you know, they say that and you, you standing in the gap. Why? They're not even innocent. They're doing crazy stuff. Yes, but God's going to honor your prayer. It's called the unfailing faith of a mother. Because your faith didn't fail. Because you didn't quit. Because you didn't get weary. He said, yes. Even those that's not innocent, he will deliver them because of the cleanness of your hand, because of your intercession, because you kept praying, because you stood in the gap, because you told the devil you couldn't have him, praise God. So you're going to have to begin to decree a thing over your family. Hallelujah. Let the devil know enough is enough, praise God. You're not robbing me another night of sleep. God has given me sleep in the name of Jesus. And God is able to take care of all of my children, all the bills, this pandemic, and everything else. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at this last statement. So make a declaration of faith. Take all these scriptures that I've taught you. Put them in your mouth. Mix faith with it. Speak it over your house and your family. Why? If you don't decree, then no light won't shine. Mama began to decree stuff over my life, and little by little, the light came. Hallelujah. I began to see the light. She began to see the light. Little by little, God brought me out of drug houses, the dope houses, every other type of house, and every type of perversion I was in. I was looking at everything. And said, that's what the enemy tell you. Look at them. God has a way that's mighty sweet. But you got to begin to decree a thing and a declaration of faith over your house and your family. Here are two good scriptures to use, Acts 16, 31, and Joshua 24, 15, a very, two that you can decree. I know. It says, and he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Now, 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 while that is up there, I, I want you here, I want you to define that and amplify, because, but, 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 but just look at that. Believe on the Lord Jesus. So I decree that God is going to save me 
and my house. So, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I decree household salvation in the name of Jesus. I decree it in the name household salvation. You're able to keep that that I committed to you. So I've committed my son. I committed my daughter. I break the power of the enemy. Satan, your power is broken in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I command darkness to go. And I want to thank you, Father, for drawing them in. Watch this. He answered and said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, give yourself up to him. Lord God, you know what? I done tried to do this. So they're in your hands. I give not only them up. I give myself up. I ain't, I'm not struggling with this anymore. Take your all out of your own keeping and entrust yourself to his keeping. God, I'm giving this to you. And you will be saved. And this applies both to you and your household as well. So you still need to decree it. In the name of Jesus, praise God, my household is saved. Devil, your power is broken. And then, praise God, uh, 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 Joshua 25, uh, what was it? 12, uh, 25, 14. What was it? Joshua, put it up. Joshua 24, 15. Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem good and evil to you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day. See, you see, choose this side. It's about a decision. Enough is enough, devil. If God said it, if I can believe God concerning my own salvation, trust him, I can trust him for the salvation of my children. If I can trust God for my own finances, then I can trust him to take care of my kids. Hallelujah. The word of God is not strong in one way and in weak in the other. Anything God says, he's able to perform. My part is believing it. It's God who watch over his word to perform it. So, I'm making a decision. If it seems good, you choose ye this day whom you shall serve, whether the gods of your father serve on the other side of the flood, talking about idols, or the gods of the Amorites, in whom land you dwell, but as for me and my house, glory be to God, we're going to serve the Lord. You need to begin to make a declaration over your house. How everything that come to this house is saved in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you that your anointing of God abides on this house. You said you will save me and my house, and I bind Satan concerning my son, my daughter, my children, what anybody that's in husband, wife, the power of the enemy is broken and I want to thank you that the angels got out there wooing them dealing with their hearts bringing them into the kingdom and while I'm sleeping good at night with sleep sweet sleep and while I'm resting praise God not eating the bread or salt I'm not up early nor am I and nor am I up late praise God but I'm, while I'm I won't think it that the spirit of God is bringing in him thank you father praise God for household salvation thank you father praise God for supernatural debt cancellation thank you for total restoration restoration of my peace and my joy hallelujah it's been such a long time since I was able to rest with confidence, knowing, praise God, that whatever I commit to God, he's able to keep that. And thank God I've committed them. You gave them to me. Now I've committed them back to you. And I can rest. They're your work. They're your project. Thank you, Father, for household salvation. You begin to call things that be not as though they were things that not don't even exist like they already existed. That's what my mama did to me. She pulled on bone and feast for what you say. I go out cussing, mad. Who's got a joint in my ear? And she said, "Boy, you say she was calling things to be none though they were." And I don't care how mad she'd go rest. Praise God. Why? She understood these scriptures. So I want to say, Happy Mother's Day to y'all guys. Every mother, you've done a great job. No, you're not perfect. But praise God, neither is any of us. Only God was. And so we honor you today for all the long suffering. All the things you did from our youth up, from the bassinet. Yeah, go back. Some of y'all need to get some of the old photos if you didn't take them. Look at when you were three, five, and seven, and nine, 16, and when you graduated. And realize that it was mom there standing there with you. It was mom there when you got your first car. It was mom there when you, when you, when you went through grade school. It was mom there who taught you how to swim. Amen, praise God. Appreciate them. Amen. If you haven't done it already, you go find the best dinner you can buy and y'all serve it to her, praise God. Give her her flowers while she can smell them and while she can enjoy them. And I just want to say to all of you women, praise God, we love you. Like I said, whether you're a mother or not, you say, well, I may be single. I'm not, well, you have a mother. So praise God, uh, you, you, you're learning how to, how to honor and how to 
admonish and, and be appreciative to her so that if you do become a mother, praise God, you, you, you begin to realize the impact and the investment. It's, it's a lifetime investment. Amen. Because she carried that child for nine months. Then her body go through all of those changes to have that child. And little by little, she weaned that child and grow that child up. And I want you to know you can release faith on that child. And the same faith that was in Timothy. He said, it didn't start with you, Timothy. It started with your grandmama Lois. And then it got in Eunice. And I'm persuaded that it's in thee also. And I want to say to you, don't you let your faith fail. Hallelujah. While you're holding on to these scriptures, praise God. God is out there moving and working. And may you have, in behalf of me and Joyce, one of the most beautiful, beautiful Mother Days ever. And I hope this Mother's Day message have encouraged you and helped you understand your esteem and your worth. And children, if not, you give it to them. You give her her praise. Hallelujah. My mama's not here, but I thank God for her prayers and her Example of faith before me all of those days when I was too stupid to get saved. Drugs, alcohol, determined to be in rebellion. It was the unfailing faith of my mother while I'm preaching to you this message. So give her her flowers. Again, in behalf of me, Joyce, and my whole family, we want to say happy Mother's Day. We love you. We'll see you on Tuesday night. Remember, if you have any type of questions, the office is still functional every week from 730 a.m. to uh, 3.30 p.m., Monday through Friday. Call. We're here to pray for you and ask any questions. Hopefully, we'll be seeing you soon. And uh, God bless you. God love you from me and Joyce. Happy Mother's Day.